From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. for tuning to our channel today. This morning I want to talk a few minutes about uh, respiratory alkalosis. You see respiratory alkalosis basically you can remember this by one word that is hypocapnia that is the decrease in PC water. Respiratory alkalosis it occurs whenever we develop hyperventilation when we hyperventilate, the carbon dioxide goes out and that decreases the PC water in the blood, resulting in an alkalotic condition. That means the pH increases. There are other conditions like bacterial sepsis and cirrhosis and also pregnancy because in, in pregnancy, progesterone it stimulates the respiratory center. And as it, uh, uh, what happens is the PC water, it decreases and results in respiratory alkalosis. So those are the basic conditions. And sometimes the cerebral vasoconstriction happens as a result of this. And cerebral vasoconstriction results in lightheadedness, dizziness, and irritability, that kind of symptoms. Now hypoxia and decreased inspired oxygen tension and uh, high altitude, they can also cause respiratory alkalosis. And conditions like uh, hypotension, severe anemia, CNS-mediated CNS disorders, and voluntary hyperventilation, anxiety. Anxiety provokes hyperventilation in many patients. And a neurologic disease, cerebrovascular accidents like infarction or hemorrhage or infections and trauma and a tumor and a pharmacological and a hormonal stimulation, some medications like salicylates, nitrites and xanthines. And these medications, um, they stimulate the respiratory center in the brain and as a result we start to hyperventilate, decrease with resulting in the decrease of PC water. And also pulmonary disease like bacterial pneumonia, it causes hyperventilation and pulmonary embolism, pulmonary edema, mechanical overventilation. So you think of conditions that increase hyperventilation. And whenever you see hyperventilation, you can say respiratory alkalosis is going on. Now, there are associated compensatory mechanisms. You see, respiratory alkalosis, pH is increasing. So the associated compensatory mechanism will be pH should decrease. And think of conditions where pH is decreased. That is, either metabolic acidosis or respiratory acidosis. Because this is respiratory condition, there will be a metabolic compensatory mechanism. So. Uh, the compensatory mechanism here will be metabolic acidosis. So respiratory alkalosis, the compensatory mechanism will be metabolic acidosis. Think about what causes uh, metabolic acidosis, low bicarb. So uh, when you think about uh, compensatory mechanisms for respiratory alkalosis, you can say metabolic acidosis resulting in uh, decreased bicarb. So these are the things we can say. The other thing is uh, the symptoms and signs. These patients develop a perioral numbness. Why? Because their calcium decreases in this condition. In respiratory alkalosis, calcium binds to albumin and results in hypocalcemia and that causes carpopedal spasm and tetany and perioral numbness. So those are the uh, symptoms and signs you need to remember in this condition. Now, treatment. Many people, uh, we use it to just, uh, whenever patient is hyperventilating, we use it to tell them, like advise them to uh, respire into a paper bag 
and that's not a good thing anymore. Why? Because it makes no difference in terms of PCO2 and it, uh, it actually decreases the oxygenation of the patient. So don't advise a patient to uh, breathe into a paper bag when they develop hyperventilation because that is useless. The, most, uh, the, the correct treatment is just relax, relax the patient. Most of the times these are anxious patients. Tell them to relax because hyperventilation is uh, uh, a self-limiting process and it's also a self-correcting process. So those are the most important points you need to remember. So hypocapnia, that is the word most important when we talk about respiratory alcohol classes. Hypocapnia. So think about uh, hypocapnia. And what causes hypocapnia? The most common cause is hyperventilation. So respiratory alkalosis is PCO2 below 35 mmHg. Okay, below 35 mmHg with an increase in serum pH more than 7.44. So those are the two numbers you need to remember. 35 mmHg and 7.44. And hyperventilation secondary to so many causes. As I said, uh, there are uh, pulmonary causes, CNS causes, trauma, pharmacological causes, hormonal causes, pregnancy. There is a whole list of uh, things that can cause hyperventilation. And this hyperventilatory conditions result in decreased PCO2 and increase in pH. The clinical findings as I said, there are uh, so many clinical findings depending on the severity and uh, activity of the process. And these clinical symptoms should alert you to the possibility like digital paresthesia, scarpopedal spasm, and uh, as I said, perioral numbness and irritability. And cerebral vasoconstriction occurs, resulting in uh, lightheadedness, dizziness, and confusion, and altered consciousness. So whenever you see these symptoms, and you should think about respiratory alkalosis. The physiological changes, as I said, they are, uh, first of all, there is decreased PCO2 and uh, increase in pH, and the compensatory mechanism will be decrease in bicarbonate, and uh, the decrease in bicarbonate causes metabolic acidosis. So respiratory alkalosis compensatory mechanism will be metabolic uh, acidosis and the renal compensation occurs and it results in decreased proton excretion and uh, resulting in the retention of uh, bicarbonate in the long term. So those are the most important uh, points and the treatment as I said in, our, in, our, in most of the conditions you should treat for uh, the underlying cause. What is causing hyperventilation? You don't treat hyperventilation. You treat what is causing the hyperventilation and that takes care of uh, respiratory alkalosis. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. You. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.